Hey guys, how is it going? I do apologize for the delay on the videos. It's been pretty hectic the past couple weeks. This week's our midterms, and so I've been kind of preoccupied with other stuff. I've been trying to uh, play some Madden, play some ranked games, and get some tip videos out for you guys. But it's taken a little bit longer than usual, so I apologize for that, and thanks for sticking with me. But... Anyways, while I was not putting out videos, I got a comment on one of my videos asking if I could go over like a trick play, uh, a certain formation with like trick plays in it, or like a unique wildcat formation or something like that. And so um, I was looking, well this was the first thing that came to mind, uh, was the gator heavy formation. And it was something that I messed with a little bit earlier in the year, but never like truly like looked at it and tried to like make a scheme out of it. And it's something that's been around. It originated in the NCAA games with the uh, Florida Gator playbook when, when they had Tim Tebow. It was uh, really popular in NCAA online and stuff. And it's obviously uh, it's not very popular in Madden. I don't think I've I don't think I've ever like had it run against me or anything. It's only in one playbook. It's in the Running Gun playbook. So if you do play Mutt, it's not going to be. Um, available to you guys. I don't think they have like the generic playbooks in Mutt. It's only the team playbooks. But if you do play online, like ranked, or just with your friends or whatever, just something goofy you can pull out and run. Um, so I was messing with it, and I came up with a pretty uh, unique scheme, I guess. It's uh, pretty fun to play. I'm not sure how viable it is to like run in a serious competitive game. But it's pretty, it's it's fun to play. Like, I wish if, if they had this playbook in Mutt, I'd probably run this in Mutt. Just because I play Mutt just to kind of goof off. But it's really fun. And so um, I was looking at pretty much all the wide receivers who had decent throwing, like throw power, throw accuracy, stuff like that. And the two people who uh, caught my eye were Cordero Patterson and Brad Smith from the Eagles. And so this scheme, I think, would work well with either of them. Um, it's something that uh, utilizes their obviously their speed. I wanted someone who was pretty fast. I chose Cordero and the Vikings because he's like 94 speed, whereas Brad Smith's only 90 speed. And so uh, even though Brad Smith can throw a little bit better and the Eagles have better personnel uh, around them, but I just picked the Vikings because I thought it would be fun. So anyway, jump right into it. Or not jump right into it because I've been talking for like two minutes. But anyway, the personnel for the formation, pretty much uh, what I do is you put your two best tight ends you put your best tight end to the left, so in this case, it's going to be Kyle Rudolph right there. And then on the other side, you want your next best tight end, so I put Chase Ford. If you're using the Eagles, it would be Zach Ertz on the left and Brent Selleck on the right. That's how I would do it. Uh, outside, you want your biggest receiver, so in this case, uh, with the Vikings, it's Charles Johnson. If you're using the Eagles, I would put Jordan Matthews out there. And then in the backfield, you want your fullback or kind of like your best blocker in the backfield. On the right side, so for the Vikings, that's Jerome Felton. For the Eagles, it would be James Casey, I'm pretty sure. And then on the other side, uh, to the left of him, you want your pretty much best playmaker that you can put right there. So it's probably going to be a halfback. In this case, obviously, it's Adrian Peterson. If you're using the Colt or the Colts, <laughs> the Eagles, I don't know why the Colts came out. If you're using the Eagles, you'd want to put LaShawn McCoy right there. So uh, pretty much... I run almost every play out of here, every single play except for the X play, short fades. And the QB power is kind of, uh, I'll, I don't think I would run that as much as the QB blast because they both kind of do the same thing. And so I'll just start off with the running game. So the first play is the QB blast. And now uh, something that I found when I was running the, these plays just like over and over just to kind of find out if they were any good and what's the best way to run them. Uh, something that's very important with the running game out of this formation is, uh, I found, do not hold sprint at, as soon as you get the ball. Always get the ball and look for where the hole's at and try to hit the hole, but don't hit sprint until you get to the hole. Because otherwise you're just going to end up like running up into the middle of the formation and probably either get smacked or get no yards or something. And even then, the running game out of this formation isn't super consistent. It's something that uh, it's like every now and then you'll pop a big play just because you have Cordero Patterson back there, and if he gets the tiny hole, he can take it to the house. But you do find every now and then you'll get a good hole. Uh, you get decent blocking. Sometimes the blocking's weird. Someone Sometimes I find like a linebacker will just shoot right up the middle unblocked, and you'll get smacked in the backfield. 
And so um, if your opponent, if you notice that's happening a lot, then you might have to lean on the passing game more often or on like the jet sweep or the power plays to kind of get like a pulling blocker and try to uh, somehow block that guy. But the QB blast is like the generic run play. I'll try to run it for you guys. Pretty much you just want to get up field right there. I did a terrible job. Uh, I find with the QB blast, a lot of times either I get like no yards or I'll bust a pretty big play. It just kind of depends. A lot of times what what I end up doing is I try to find a hole and then like spin back to the other side and try to fake out a bunch of defenders that way. Uh, something like that. Try to get up field. Uh, right there I was pretty much one guy away from taking it to the house. Uh, you just kind of have to try to find your seam and try to get up uh, field as quickly as possible with this play. You don't have a lot of room. You can't. It doesn't really let you cut it outside very easily. Um, so pretty much... Uh, what I'll do, like I said, I'll try to find a hole and then spin back to cut it back and try to uh, fake out a bunch of defenders. And right there is what I was talking about. That linebacker came right up the middle unblocked. And so that'll happen randomly. I haven't really figured out like why that happens or when it happens. I guess it's just whenever uh, they have a lot of people blitzing and some guy just comes up the middle unblocked. But yeah. Uh, Pretty much your base running play right there is uh, what I'd say that the QB Blast is. Um, also, you want the reason I did this with a, a receiver, like I did, I'm doing this with a receiver because I wanted more speed. You can do this with a quarterback. The only quarterback I'd recommend doing it with would be Cam Newton, though, because like when you think mobile quarterbacks, like you think Cam. Uh, RG3, you think Kaepernick, you think like Russell Wilson, but all, everybody except for Cam is really fragile and doesn't have the best carry rating. Like, you don't want them taking pot shots like all game by your opponent's linebackers and D linemen. Whereas Cam's a lot bigger, has better carry, um, a lot more durable. And so he would be really the only one that I would run this scheme with. All the others, uh, I'd be too scared that they'd get hurt early on or something or end up fumbling a lot. And something I forgot to mention, uh, pretty much always flip the formation or flip the play to where your receiver's on the right side. And the reasoning behind that is uh, later on, one of the passing plays, you want to roll out to the right because Cordero's a right-hander, right-handed passer. You want to roll out to whichever side your uh, whoever you're using back there can is like to his throwing hand, pretty much. So if you're right-handed, you want to roll out right, left-handed, roll out left. So that's the QB Blast. Uh, the QB Power is a kind of similar, I suppose, but it's, I don't know, because of the pulling lineman, I think it gets, like, a lot more crowded. I don't like it as much. See right there? Like, there's just a lot of people in the middle, and I just kind of get confused. Like, I'm not sure where I should try to cut. Right there, I was able to spin. Uh, I spun for no reason. I could have done that without spinning, and I was able to get good yardage, so... It's just pretty much, if I were running this, I would say it's all about the element of surprise right there. There was like nobody in the middle. But um, it's all about the element of surprise and running something that your opponent's never seen before and might not know how to defend. Because this play does have a lot of really unique uh, plays in it that no one's really used to seeing. And a lot of people know how to stop a lot of the like, super popular stuff. But uh, what stops the super popular stuff might not be good against this. So they might not... Uh, when you start running this and they can't stop it, they might not know what to do. And so uh, you might have like an edge up on them because of that. So as you get, as you guys can see, you get decent blocking on this play. Uh, I've gotten five yards like three times in a row. Uh, just kind of follow your blocks. Try to spin up. I always try to spin up field. I think the spin's like the best move this year. I would recommend either spinning or juking. But um, yeah. If And that's what happens. If you break one tackle and boast into the open. That's why I chose Cordero Patterson over, uh, or the Vikings with Cordero over the Eagles with Brad Smith, because Cordero is just so explosive. If you break a tackle, or if you get through, if you squeeze through a tiny hole or something, um, he can definitely take it to the house a lot easier than uh, Brad Smith can. And so the other two run, yeah, the other two running plays are the power fake jet and the jet sweep. So the power fake jet's kind of like a counter. But I treat it more like a read option almost, like, right there, I meant to spin to the right. But um, I treat it more as a read option because you can hand it off to the jet sweep guy. And I'll only do that whenever, if I see at the snap of the ball that, like, 
there's no free defender to the left side, I'll go ahead and hand it off and try to get outside. And the way you do that is you press A right there. Uh, I think I could have gotten a lot of yards if I hadn't spun into my own guy, if I would spun back into the hole. But uh, you hold down A, and that will give the ball to the jet sweep receiver. So right here, I, I wouldn't do it. I would just try to keep it and try to get upfield. And right there, uh, we could have taken that to the house. But in the sake of saving time, I just dove down. But um, yeah, this is more of a counter action. Uh, it's, I think it's a pretty good run play. Like You get decent blocking. I wish they would kind of let you run back to the right a little bit more. They really like kind of force you to go up the middle with this run. But uh, right there, like I had a huge hole. If he hadn't got off of his block, I would have easily taken that to the house. I probably could have ran it a little bit better position-wise. So this play is really kind of a hit or miss kind of play, as you guys can see. Uh, either I get really big yards on it, or I don't really get too much. Even though right there I got about five yards. So, uh, and this play is com obviously complements the jet sweep really well. Uh, mainly because they both have the same action. The jet sweep's not as good of a play in my opinion. Um, it's I don't know I don't know how to describe it. The the two blockers in the backfield don't really block very well. They kind of just run to the sideline like they run like parallel to the line of scrimmage, and they just don't cut up the field quickly enough for my liking. And so like right there right there is actually that's one of the better plays I've had with the jet sweep before I started recording this video I was like losing yards almost every single play with the jet sweep so uh, I wasn't feeling very good about it and that's pretty much your only hope in my opinion when running this play is like get to the outside and if someone happens to be there you're gonna have to like spin or juke uh, up inside of them but right there like that's what happens a lot you'll run into uh, your backside blocker so in this case Felton he just doesn't get out quick enough and he ends up just kind of getting in the way and I, I wish he would just cut up the field. If he cut up the field instead of just running to the sideline, I think it'd be a lot better. But because you have to wait for him, it slows you down a lot, and that's usually what ends up happening. So I would just stay away from this play. I would just honestly just run the uh, power fake jet, and um, if they're not respecting the left side of the line of scrimmage, just give it off to the receiver on the power fake jet, like I said. Um, if you really want to run this play, I would only run it in the case where if you notice there's like nobody to the left and uh, it's like they're leaving it wide open because a lot of the plays in this formation do go to the right side of the field and so someone might do that where they start overloading the right side and stop paying attention to the left and you can pop a big play with the jet sweep but otherwise it's a very situational play that I wouldn't call very much so that does it for the run game so now the passing game uh, pretty much my favorite passing play out of this formation is the PA jet sweep and this is the pretty much the reason why I flip it and have it uh, everybody going to the right side so that I can roll out to the side that Cordero throws to. So pretty much the only adjustment I make is I put Johnson on a fade uh, for the one-on-one. -on -one. And surprisingly, Cordero does a pretty good job of throwing dots. Uh, he can actually uh, pretty much hit the flat, the cross, and the corner out pretty easily uh, whenever I was running this earlier. Like he was making pretty consistent throws, and he's able to actually get the ball downfield to Johnson. Um, probably like, I'd say like 60 to 70 percent of the time, he made a pretty decent throw to Johnson that I was able to go up and actually have a chance at catching the ball. Uh, the other 30 percent, he overthrew it like really badly. <laughs> but that's going to happen when you're running a scheme like this. Uh, it's not very serious. It's more just for fun and just kind of to goof off and have fun with. So pretty much the way I like to run this play, right there. If I had set my feet, I probably would have made a better throw. Usually Cordero uh, does a pretty good job of throwing on the run. But pretty much what I like to do is I roll out to the right side, and my first read is always Adrian Peterson in the flat. If he's not open, you have several options. You could take off and run if you feel comfor comfortable, uh, which that's one of your biggest assets out of this formation. You have to always remember, even if you're passing the ball, uh, you have a 94 speed <laughs> wide receiver at quarterback so do not be afraid to take off with the ball and run which was something I did kind of get used to because I usually only play with like pocket passers like Drew Brees or Tom Brady and so I'm very used to just sitting in the pocket and making reads and not worrying about scrambling but uh, it's definitely something you have to take advantage with and take advantage of with this formation in my opinion to make it like as successful and as efficient as it possibly can possibly can be and so as I said, Peterson's your first read, and then you want to look for pretty much Ford or Rudolph 
coming across. Uh, they'll kind of be in the same area, so it can get, get kind of awkward at times, but you'll be able to pretty much tell which one's open. And then you have Johnson for the one-on-one -on -one, uh, deep if you want to take that. So go ahead and run it again. Right there. Uh, nothing was really open right there. That was one of the few times that actually nothing was open. I probably should have just thrown it to Charles Johnson. I'd actually like to see uh, what I could have done better right there. So Peterson got, yeah, Peterson kind of got locked up right there. And they got, Chris Conti got a good block shed on my right tackle. And that guy was kind of dropping back and covering both of them. I wasn't really comfortable making that throw. I had Char Charles Johnson actually had his guy beat, but I don't know if Cordero could have made that throw all the way downfield. And so I just, I should have just thrown the ball away, but I tried to make something happen and throw it to AP. And actually, if it was a good throw, AP could have caught it and kind of got up the sideline, but uh, that happens sometimes. So let me try and run that again. Not against goal line. This is, uh, earlier when I was running all this, this was by far my most successful passing play. Uh, I think it's actually very good and actually can be tough to stop. So, um, right there. I mean, right there, if they can toe tap, uh, like he did right there, uh, Cordero actually makes pretty good throws. You wouldn't expect him to throw like a 25-yard dot uh, down the sideline on the run, but he actually does a pretty good job of it. Uh, right there, if they're in man-to-man, -man, a lot of times Peterson will be wide open in the flat. And that's why I say put your best playmaker right there, because you want to get him the ball in space. Uh, and also because, like, Felton's just, uh, for this play, Felton's just blocking. And uh, a lot of times, that's the route I end up hitting, is I either will hit Adrian Peterson or I'll take off with Cordero Patterson. Right there, uh, I tried to throw it to Kyle Rudolph, and he actually threw it straight at Chase Ford, who didn't even react. So, uh, But right there, I could have definitely hit P AP. Right there, I threw that a little bit too early and wasn't able to get a good, uh, wasn't able to get good separation. I don't want to throw the flat route every single time, but that's what's open like every single time. Uh, let me see. I'll try to show you guys the uh, deep ball. If I can... Okay, I didn't have enough time to throw it, so... Once again, hit the flat route, try to get upfield. It's very deadly with either AP or if you're using the Eagles, which is the other team I'd run this scheme with. If you have LaShawn McCoy, uh, it's also very good. Try to throw... No, Okay. I wanted to throw the deep ball there. That was the crossing route, and actually it was a pretty well-placed ball, but the defender made a good play on it. But uh, pretty much just want to point out again, Patterson actually makes pretty good throws. Right there, that's what I'm talking about. Right there, Charles Johnson definitely had a shot to catch that ball. And uh, obviously he wasn't able to. But he, Cordero actually at least puts it in a place where uh, he can make a play on it. Right there, it was a little bit overthrown. Also, Charles Johnson's not the best guy to do this with. Like, he's only six foot two. If you're using the Eagles, they have Jordan Matthews, who's like six foot four. That's what happens sometimes. So I was talking about Cordero will overthrow it at times. Um, I don't really want to try to complete one for you guys, though. So let's see if I could do this. Right there, okay, I was able to catch one. So as you can see, like, I threw it, what, four times, and three out of the four times. Um, it was a pretty good throw, and the one time was slightly overthrown that if you're using the Eagles and a t you have a taller receiver out there, he probably would have been able to catch. Right there, I was under some pressure, so I was I just had to kind of get try and get the ball off. I want to throw something other than the uh, AP route for you guys, but... So I'm talking about... Oh, right there. He fumbled, but... Uh, <laughs> wow. You have to be... You have to not be afraid to take off and make your opponent respect the fact that uh, even if you're passing the ball, you still have Cordero Patterson at quarterback. Something like right here. Take off, try to get up the sideline, and make something happen. It's all about rolling out and having multiple options once you get outside the pocket. Um, wow, that was an awful throw. Okay, so, well, sometimes you can expect throws like that uh, out of this formation, but you guys get the idea with this play. Um, uh, I tried to cut up between the tackle and guard, and they kind of pinched me in. Let me try to get one more nice little pass off from this this play right here. So yeah, right there. I mean, 25 yard gain right there uh, through a pretty nice pass. So definitely a nice play. Definitely my favorite play. I don't know. I just think it's fun to run. Oh god, that was a block. But uh oh oh okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's very effective and it can be very tough to stop if you mix it in along with the run game and the other passing plays out of this formation. 
There's a few others that I like to run as well. Uh, the PA tight end cross is nice. I like this play. Uh, generally, I was kind of having trouble figuring out what I like to do with the guys in the backfield. But uh, generally, I would just fade Charles Johnson and run it as is and just look for one of the crossing routes, the one-on-one -on -one for Johnson or a check down to AP. I wasn't having like a ton of success doing anything else. Right there, I tried to squeeze that in. That might have been asking a lot for uh, Cordero to make that kind of throw. But, um, yeah, just kind of read the crossing routes and try to deliver it over the field. If it's zone, you should be able to find a pocket uh, to deliver the ball. If it's man-to-man, -man, usually both crossing routes do a pretty nice job against man-to-man -man of, uh... Wow, okay. I feel like you should have caught that. <laughs> but, uh, they usually do a good job of getting nice separation against their guys. Um... And notice that the crossing route by Kyle Rudolph is a lot shallower than uh, the one by uh, Chase Ford. So what happens a lot of times is the zones will sink back to guard Chase Ford and Kyle Rudolph will be open underneath him. At least uh, from my experience so far. And that's generally what happens against man. Usually they'll get a good, uh, nice inside release and you'll be able to hit them in stride for some really nice yards. Even on the other side. And Chase Ford's obviously like not the best tight end on the planet. With the Eagles, uh, having Zach Ertz and Brent Selleck and even Trey Burton would be a lot better. But uh, that Cordero Patterson 94 speed, man, it's hard to replace. And right there, I got no jump animation, but was still able to catch the ball. So that was weird. But yeah, just kind of uh, that's a nice little mix-up play uh, with the PA end around. Or the not the PA end around. Uh, that's what the play reminds me of, honestly, is uh, the PA jet sweep reminds me a lot of the PA end around. Uh, with getting out the pocket and having that flat route and then the corner. But um, yeah, it's a nice complimentary play to the PA Jet Sweep. And then the last passing play uh, that I like to call, or actually there's two, the Z Streak and wide receiver corner. So I'll, I'll just kind of go over these pretty quickly. The one adjustment I make with this play is put Peterson on a swing to the left. And so I really want to attack both flats. My first read is always the flats. If they're open, throw it. If not, I look for Rudolph on his corner route. And then Ford on his post route. And this is a nice play, a uh, complimentary play to the PA Jet Sweep because the PA Jet Sweep really attacks the right side of the field. Whereas uh, you have a corner, on this play, you have a corner route to the left and a post route to the left. So uh, really, if you've been attacking the right side of the field and then you hit him with this, going to the left side, you can catch him off guard and out of position maybe. Uh, against man-to-man, -man, right there, Kyle Rudolph dropped it, but you're going to want to either try to hit the corner route or the post route against man. Against zone, if you see Peterson open in the flat, I'm, I'm just going to take that every single time and try to make somebody miss. Uh, sometimes something like that will happen where uh, you won't be able to make somebody miss and you'll get two or three yards, but the times where you do make somebody miss, you'll get huge gains. And so no matter what, pretty much, if I see the flats open, I'll go ahead and take that all day. So this is just, like I said, another good complimentary play. I'll try to hit. Oh, okay, that was a terrible read. I should have thrown that a lot sooner. But if there's no one over the middle, don't be afraid to throw that route. Generally, you might be afraid to throw it because of uh, you might be scared of Cordero's accuracy. But don't be. Uh, he actually makes pretty good throws, as I've said a lot before. Right there, the corner routes against man-to-man. -man. Really good. This play, this formation is really hard to run man-to-man -man against because you have a lot of corner routes, you have a lot of uh, flat routes that beat man-to-man, -man, and you have a lot of crossing routes. So uh, your opponent really kind of has to play zone out of this formation. And so the last play is wide receiver corner. And uh, pretty much the only thing I do on this play is I hot route forward to a flat route. He, generally, he's on a block and release flat. I just do the flat route because I want him to get out there quicker so that he can occupy the flat, and I'll try to hit Johnson uh, on the corner route. That's pretty much my read on this play, either the flat or the corner. Also, if, obviously, if Peterson's open in the flat, go ahead and hit him, and then you've got, uh, as kind of a last read, Rudolph coming, over the, coming across the middle of the field. But uh, a lot of times, you're going to want to try to hit that corner route, uh, the C route by Charles Johnson out there. A lot of times, it will be open. Against zone, you just have to be patient and wait for him to cut against the so towards the sideline. And against man to man, like the past two plays, he generally gets really good cut on his man and is able to get a nice outside positioning. Right there, I should have thrown it to um. I had the flat wide open. I had Chase Ford wide open in the flat, but I tried to squeeze that in there, and that was bad on my part. So this is another just good so solid passing play. I mean, nothing too fancy about it. You can also try to hit that post route against man-to-man. -man. 
Usually Kyle Rudolph will get good inside positioning. You just have to throw it kind of quickly because even though he gets good positioning, Kyle Rudolph's not the fastest guy, so if you wait too long, uh, his defender will have time to recover and make a play on the ball. So just uh, be sure to not take too long to throw that. So yeah, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Uh, it was kind of rough, uh, kind of raw, I guess you could say, because there's a lot... That Anytime you run a formation with like a wide receiver at quarterback, it's very unpredictable what kind of throws he's going to make. And so it's tough to make a breakdown of this formation and like make it look really, really good whenever it's just like there's always a chance of Cordero Patterson just making terrible throws. So uh, I hope you guys saw the potential of this formation. It's really, really fun. I'm not going to say it's like great to use online and stuff. Um, it's obviously, I mean... I wish I could use it in Mutt, like I said earlier. I would use it just because it's super, super fun to run. And I think it can be, actually be very successful online. Um, I wouldn't really risk running it unless I ran it like a lot in unranked games and stuff. But that's just me personally. Uh, you guys who might not care as much about ranked could go in and run it and just be like, whatever, whatever happens, happens. But yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed a very unique formation. The next video will either be probably like a ranked match or another tip from uh, one of the playbooks. Uh, I have like a few ranked matches. I just need to cut them up and uh, commentate them and upload them. So if I can get around to doing some of those, uh, those will be the next vids up. But you guys can be looking forward to that. Once again, I apologize for the delay in videos. It's just been rough with midterms coming up and stuff. But after this week uh, goes by, uh, the video should be coming out a lot more frequently. So thanks for sticking with me. And I hope you, I hope you guys have a great day.